and welcome back to Oki Oki Oki. I'm delighted to say that we are joined by the latest Welsh player to earn his tour card, Louis Williams, this evening. Louis, thanks for joining us. You're starting to settle now into life on the tour. You've played in your first Super Series, already taken a massive, a massive few scalps, actually, including that win over Michael Van Gerwen, and of course returned to the UK Open. How are you finding it all? Um, to be fair, I think it all started off a bit surreal, uh, especially on the first day, picking up two wins against two big names. Um, I can't say I didn't expect it because I've been over a Cape Blob. But yeah, mm. definitely started off so surreal. But yeah, I think I've uh, adapted well to it. So um, looking forward to next week now for the next Super Series. And it's funny you say, you're saying that. That's one of the questions that came up from a few people, actually, Louis, was, you know, that first day on, on the Pro Tour, you know, you beat Demi, then you go on and beat Kim. And then Michael, obviously, in the last six, uh, last thirty-two, what you know, what what was going through your head? What what were the feelings? Beating these players who were so renowned on the tour. Um, I don't really know to be honest. It was just so in the moment. I try to um, keep my emotions in, sort of thing. Yeah. Concentrate in the next game. Um, unfortunately, I came into an inform Johnny Clayton in the last sixteen, but obviously the first three wins I think topped it off, topped the whole week off actually. Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't have got much better than that. And you know I the, mean, MV, after- the MV, sorry, Chan, you go. No, I was just gonna say after the first win, you know, obviously a great a scalp is one number ten in the world. Like were you just like, yes, like I can do it. Like that did that sort of spur you on as well, taking that confidence from that win? Or were you just, just like next one, next one? Um, I think it's a bit of course to be honest. With you. Um when I seen the draw come up and I seen Ed Demi, obviously I know he's just won um, a major. Um he's in form at the minute. Obviously it was a good game as well. So after I beat him, I was kind of um I was on cloud nine a little bit and then <laughs> Uh, kind of had to come back down to earth then to play Kim, um, obviously beat him, which was nice, and then come back down to earth again to play Michael. Um, but then, yeah, it was just all so surreal, to be honest with you. How difficult is it to do that? You know, obviously you do this a lot on the Pro Tour, but how difficult is it adapting to that, having to come down, but then get yourself back up for a match and do that consistently? Um, to be fair, I, I had to work it out fairly quick, obviously, because um, I haven't really had the Pro Tour experience before. yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously challenge tour is fairly different because you'll have some games where you think okay I've never heard of him before mm. but whereas with Proto you know everyone can play so you kind of have to be the same every game um, there's no mugs on there so you just got to have the same head on really so How did you feel, you feel like- when you saw it was MVG in the neck were you just like yes my luck or were you just like bring it on yeah no I was just bring it on really bring it on I knew I was playing well um, obviously 102 average I think it was against Demi and uh, 90 something against Kim, so I was like, Yeah, I'm playing really well, yeah. So, um, the confidence is sky high going into it, and it obviously paid off, which is nice. <laughs> and and how, with, did you, with, how did you feel when it was, um, I've taken over there, sorry, <laughs> how did it feel when it was five all then <laughs> going into that deciding leg? Um, I think I, I had the throw, I think, so I think I started off with like a 140 or something or 134, and I was like, Right, here we go, I've got this now. And then I had a few bad scores in between, like a 60, 59, 59, and I was like, Ah, oh, don't do this. <laughs> But I left 111, I think it was then, for the second time in the match. Um, and then 57, 14, and thankfully the tops win. And then she was a bit of relief at the end. That's what I was going to say, you know, following it on Dark Connect, you know, because you were 5-3 down and you took out 111 to go 5-4, yeah. Then was it 90, I think, to 5-all? Yeah, and then yeah. the second 111. And, you know, like we always say on this show, you know, watching you guys on tour, <laughs> that feeling when it turns yellow... You know, me, me and the two kids were watching it and it was just a massive sort of leap. You know, he's, he's actually done it. He's beaten MVG on, on the first day. So, you know, for us as fans, is great. But you must have been on cloud nine coming out of that cubicle. Yeah, most definitely, 100%. That's probably the best I felt actually coming off the hockey. Um, yeah. But again, I think I needed about 10 minutes then until I was playing Johnny. So I had to come back on to Earth quickly, celebration got cut short. And then yeah. um, sort of focus on the next game. But um, yeah, looking back at it now, I think it's a massive scalp to be honest with you. And, um, I'm look, looking forward to the next one, so it doesn't really matter who we draw next week. I'll just take the same mindset into it mm. and hopefully do the same again. Uh, how, how much, much of a difference? Do... Sorry, Abby. Sorry, go on. Uh, so, uh, how, how much of a difference does it make? You know, when you play in the kind of the outer boards and then you're told you're on the streaming board, does that does that chi- change the mindset? You know, there are more eyes on you. Does it does it put more pressure on you? You feel? Not personally to me, no. But I think a few people would feel like that, obviously, because there is a lot more people watching. Mm. Um, but to be, to be honest, I, I prefer playing on stream. Like I prefer playing on stage. It's just kind of people are watching. Yeah. Um, but a, a, everyone's different. So I'm not sure how some other players feel about it. But for me, I'm not really too bothered. So. 
And as someone who is is new to this experience of, you know, playing these players when week in, week out, we often say that it's become the players like Michael Van Gerwen lose that fear factor now because you are playing each other so frequently. Do you feel that already because you've had to play them in that environment that you feel if you met them, you know, on the big stage and when you do meet them on the big stage, you know what to expect from them now because it is normal for you to face them? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, to be fair, with the UK Open, I kind of went into it thinking it's just a it's just a pro tour with a bigger prize money, just over one day, really. Mm. So because yeah. um, you are playing the same players, um, same as you'd see on the pro tour, it just happens to be either on stage two or stage one, either on ITV or something like that. But yeah, I just look at it as a bigger pro tour. Um, so yeah, yeah, it went really well. But unfortunately, ran in against Scott. Um, thank God, a little bit unlucky, but that starts. Yeah. There was another question that came up actually because you've you've experienced U- the UK Open on two ends of the scale. You know you've been in that multi boardroom where you beat the Souza and all the crowd go wild when you hit that win in double. So how different was it this time? You know playing in that sort of sterile environment was was it, was that completely different? Yeah, to be fair, it was massively different. Um, so I think I had a few of the boys watching uh, last year as well. So I was kind of putting on a bit of a show for the boys and obviously doing it myself as well. So I, I play quite well in front of fans. Like I said, I like playing on stream and in front of fans on stages. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was massively different this year. But again, you can't let it get to you because it's the same for everyone. So um, it's just, it is what it is at the minute. So I'm looking, looking forward to when fans can come back and guests on Pro Tours as well. Even that helps a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to when it all starts getting back properly. But we've got to make do for this for now. Hmm. And if, if we take a step back then, Louis, you know, we're, we're talking now, you're, a, you're a, co- a tour card holder. But if we go back, say, to 2020, you know, it's, it's been a terrible year for everybody, really, you know, not being able to, to get out and play. But you're probably one of these players who's really benefited from, from playing online. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, 100%. 100% yeah, definitely. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of the online darts at first, but then it's, it's kind of all we had, to be honest with you, with lockdown. Um, it's lucky we've got a sport that you can do that in the house. Um, so yeah, I just kind of practiced non-stop, played as many online comps as I could, and then the darts just sh- shot up from there, really. So um, I couldn't really believe how well I was playing, so that would give you a massive confidence booster. Yeah, and do you feel that kind of helped you then when you when you got to Q School? You had that sort of, you know, match, although it's different sort of match practice, you had, you know, I think it was, was it early February you played against James Richardson, didn't you, in the semi-final of an online tournament, and you, I think you posted some in... 108 to 109. So it was showing yeah, yeah. It, it, it was there, but it was just in a different environment, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, I know some people are different, but with the online darts, I still treat it as like a proper normal game anyway. I still do get the buzz off it, winning yeah. the game. I still not, not give it large as such, but you still give it a bit of a, give it a bit of um, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think I, I think it's quality match practice, to be honest with you. Um, I don't really see it as any, any different now. Hmm. And of course, we mentioned that you... Sorry, go on. <laughs> we got to stop here. Yeah, um, talking as Q School, I mean, you did obviously so well, and you did so well. To, you know, you had the last day almost off in a sense. Like, you know, did you think you were going to get it that quickly? Obviously, you'd like to get it in in the knockout stages and things like that. But I mean, every day you were consistently really good. I mean, that must have been a huge boost as well going into the Super Series. Yeah, definitely. I think maybe I went into the first day, maybe a little bit too confident because I thought, all right, here we go. I'm playing, playing the darts in my life. Nobody's going to stop me. Something. Um, but obviously I ended up losing first round. So I just went back to the hotel room, straight back on the practice board. And then put it right the next day. I thought I played fairly consistent, grinded up a few wins and obviously did the same again the third day. And then it was nice going into the last day pretty comfortable knowing I could just have a practice ready for the Super Series. So. And I guess the question I was going to ask you kind of leads on quite nicely from that, because you are still very early on in your journey. Obviously, we saw you at the UK Open in 2020. Since then, what would you say have been the biggest challenges or setbacks you faced? And what have you learned the most about your game? I guess, as you said there, you know, having to maybe rein it in a little bit or, you know, what have you really learned about yourself and where you need to to get to to ensure you get the most out of your game? I think I just kind of kind of put my game all together type of thing through lockdown. I've worked out what patches I need to work on, um, whether it's scoring or doubles, what different aspects of the game, uh, like the mindset and stuff like that. So I've just kind of put it all together, really. And then um, these past maybe six to 12 months, I've just felt so confident in everything I've done in, uh, in darts and in life, really. So, um, yeah, I think it's all paying off. And would you say, you know, you've got experience of the Challenge Tour, Development Tour? I think, you know, the whole point of those tours is to get 
young guys like yourself ready for the main tour. Would, would you say, you know, following that ladder throughout your career has made you into the player you are today? Yeah, yeah, most definitely, because um, obviously it's, it's near enough the same setup anyway. Um, with the development tours, obviously, like say in Wigan, Challenge tours in Wigan, Q School used to be in Wigan. So it was all the same venue, so you kind of had the experience anyway. And you're playing against kind of the same players who would be in Q School and then eventually got on the tour as well. So, yeah, I think it's great practice anyway, because there's a lot of good players you've never heard of. So it's good for the mindset then, because you can't, you can't treat anyone as mugs really in the game now, mm. as there's so many good players out there. And obviously the Challenge Tour last year, you know, we probably saw the best of you really. You know, we, I think we touched on it in our last episode when you played against Richie. You know, as an 18-year-old, you must have thought, I'm playing, you know, one of the legends of, of the game from Wales. Um, and then you go up and you absolutely smash him with 117 average. You know, the, it must have been, you know, some, a bittersweet sort of moment really, was it? Yeah, I think that was a bit surreal as well. Um, probably one of the highlights of my career so far, I'd say as well. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I see, I seen the draw when he was on the challenge show, and I seen if I won two games or something like that, I'd know I draw Richie in the board final. So I was kind of following his um, results as well. I was like, right, go on, Richie, celebrating his wins for him. <laughs> then so this one, to play him. You know what I mean? Just for experience. Um, yeah. So I've looked up to Richie, the legend in the game, of course. Um, so I thought, right, just put on, put, on, put on a good game, give him a good game here, and then see what happens. Mm. Next thing you know, <laughs> he was like five one hundred seventy. Now I was like, I didn't even know what to say to be honest. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. And as we're on Richie Burnett, then let's let's discuss it. You've taken the Prince of Wales as your nickname. How did that conversation go? Obviously, you spoke to Richie about it and you had a good discussion with him. How did that go? To be honest, I've been struggling for a nickname for a while. Um, so my management company been putting polls out, um, people putting suggestions into the amount of people coming up to me saying, but when you just have the Prince of Wales, I can't, I can't do that, obviously, you know what I mean? Mm. I feel so bad if I just took the nickname type of thing. So then I was just had a really good think about it. And I'm, I'm quite good friends with Richie anyway, so I thought, right, we'll give it a go. Uh, so I just messaged him straight away and replied near enough straight away to say, yeah, do it, give it a go. There's a new Prince of Wales now. and Just enjoy it, he said. So that, that, that meant a lot to me, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, re really proud to have that nickname now. So just for viewers to understand, once you got your tour card, was it a requirement for you to to pick a nickname and a, like a walk-on song? How does it how does it come about? I still don't really know, to be honest. You. I just kind of thought in the moment that <laughs> that's what right, the best, best thing is something quick. Um, yeah. Just just get it out there um, for people I know. Um, so yeah, I just kind of decided fairly quickly then on a walk-on song as well. Um, so it's all in now. Can't wait to hear it and hear your name called out and hear that song soon, hopefully then. Yes, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> Um, we talked in the last vod about, um, I think Dylan said he'd love to be a fly on, your, on the wall in your practice sessions with Nathan Aspinall. Go on, tell us what it's like then, to put, put Dylan out of his misery. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, again, that's another thing that started off a bit crazy. Um, obviously watching Nathan on TV week in, week out in the Premier League and stuff. And then next thing you know, I've got to practice with him three times a week. Um, but now we just clicked and we're just you know, close mates, having a good practice, having a laugh. Uh, we're both very competitive as well, so we both just want to beat each other in every game we play. Uh, so that, that's good as well. I like the competitiveness um, as it brings us both on sort of thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, still, still going really well. We're still going to continue to practice. Um, I think Nate's on a bit of a dip in form at the minute, so hopefully he'll try and get back straight back up there to where he was. Uh, hopefully I'll try and climb up the rankings a bit more as well and be challenging in the future now the top, top 16. So. And is there anything he's kind of told you about dealing with the mental side of the game, I guess, because, you know, living out of a suitcase, the challenges you face off the hockey can often pose a bigger threat than the ones you, than the ones you face on it, you know? So has he, has he given you any tips on how to deal with that side of it? Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, Nate's been pretty spot on about it. Um, any questions I've got, I'll ask him. So if he's been there, done that, um, especially about the mental side, to be honest with you, because a lot of people have said that to me about the mental side and I didn't realise how tough it would be. Mm. Um, but obviously been away with Q School for a week and then Super Series for a week away again for UK Opens I'm away for three weeks at the four so that's been a bit tough as well because I've been away from the family a lot and that's been pretty tough so obviously I'm missing my little sister I'm missing my brother I'm missing the family um, so yeah it, it is getting to me a little bit but obviously it can't let it affect me now I've just got to try and rise to it and um, take it from there now really Yeah that's one thing I was going to say you know obviously family plays a big role in your life Louis and you know, we've seen in the Super Series in the UK Open, you get dropped off at the train station. We have the picture of you go in. You know, in, in normal times, you might have your dad with you or a, or a few friends you could take with you to these events. So, yeah, I suppose it does test you mentally, you know, before you've even got on the hockey, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. There's nothing more than I want to bring my bring my dad or my brother to a pro tour. Mm. Uh, just um, just having to watch my oh, games for the support. But uh, the closest my dad's getting a minute is the train station, so uh, <laughs> he's gonna have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've received a number of messages. I just wanted to get your opinion on this. Um, when we put a feeler out about, you know, people sending in questions and things, Chris Doby mentioned to me um, the other day, you know, what a talented player you are. He replied on Instagram saying how talented you were. And a number of others say the same, you know, how great, it, how great is it for you to already be, be thought so highly of in this industry by players of that calibre? Yeah, to be fair, that really does me a lot, actually. So going into the pro tour, um, knowing that all the lads speak highly of me, like I can go in there with a bit of confidence as well. Um, still have a chat, so I've got to say, class Dobie's a close mate as well. We play pairs together online, Mike Smith, Nate, a few of the lads, you know what I mean? So it does give me a lot of confidence knowing that they all think highly of me, um, especially because they've been around so long and then they're one of the biggest names in darts, really. So, yeah, it means a lot of that. And I guess players as well who, like you, we mentioned it in the last pod that we did, you're a very confident young lad, you know, like they are. But also, I think the one thing you can say about all four of you is that it doesn't boil over into arrogance. And I think that is a very fine line. Would you agree with that, that it's very important to keep that, you know, as confidence? Is that something you're mindful of? Because yeah, you do it very well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, that's spot on. Um, the nail on the head. There is a very fine line with it. Um, there's some people, uh, obviously not naming any names, obviously, yeah. but there's some people who will take it too far and you can tell they're a different type of person. But um, yeah, there's a massive difference between confident, which obviously I'm very confident, like you said. But one thing I'll never ever be is arrogant to, towards anyone, really. So. Mm. I, I was going to say, you, you, you're good friends with Brad Brooks as well, aren't you? The World Youth Champion, you know, has, has Brad given you any sort of insight or sort of, again, help on the on the mental side to get you prepared for, for your first year on yeah. tour? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's been exactly the same as well. Obviously, I've had a few questions and asked him, so he's been there, done that since he was 17. Mm. Um, so that's a massive achievement there in itself. So he's kind of known the ins and outs of the tour for near enough four years now, so he's given me some proper good advice for it as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's still still early days, at, you know, at the start of your PDC career. You know, as a first year, have you set any sort of targets? You, have you got any goals in mind where you'd like to be by, by a certain, you know, a certain time in the year? Yeah. I think the first one is just mainly to enjoy myself. Because um, if I enjoy myself, it's technically well. If mm -hmm. I don't, then I send it to my game drops. So the first part is definitely to enjoy myself. Um, I'd like to qualify for the Players' Championships, um, Players' Championship Finals, sorry, and then qualify for the Worlds as well. So that'd be nice. So I'll have to try and climb up the Pro Tour rankings uh, for the Players' Championship Finals. Yeah. And then I think it's the top 64 as well to qualify for the Worlds. So that'd be nice too. So like, I got some questions which have come in from um, from fans then that we went out to. The first one, um, so it's come out through on Twitter from at Geza P182. Uh, what are your early impressions from competing on the tour? And I think what he means by that is, is the standard, what, what you expected, is it better sort of thing? No, I think it's everything I have expected, to be honest with you. Um, I had a little feeling of what it was going to be like, and it was exactly that. It was exactly like that, to be honest with you. Everyone there is just unbelievable. You stand behind someone practicing, the amount of 180s people have hit like, on practice is unbelievable. So, yeah, <laughs> um, it, does, it was a bit surreal, but I've adapted really well into it as well. So I think I'm just kind of like meant to be there in my comfort zone now. So Yeah. Because how long have you actually actively been playing darts, would you say then, at, you know, at a good good standard? Um, been taking darts seriously when I moved up to Liverpool, so probably about two years ago. Okay. So would you say have you got, you know, have you overachieved? Have you got to where you want sort of earlier in your career than you thought you would? Um, well, obviously, when I was playing younger, when I was younger as well, playing youth company from about maybe 13, 14. So I played okay. for Wales Youth, being captain of Wales Youth as well. That's a great achievement. But I still didn't really see darts going anywhere. So I wasn't really that fussed on it sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so when I did start, start taking it seriously, everything did come thick and fast. Didn't really expect the UK Open that quick. Yeah. Or maybe even like top 16 challenge or stuff like that, challenge or final. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm putting the work in, so not wouldn't say I'm surprised at where it's going at the minute, so because I'm working really hard for it. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm really glad the way it's going at the minute. And it's funny you mention that. We had another comment from um, on Twitter from at Phil the Bull, uh, and he talks about uh, a time when he gave you some advice when you were about 14, 15, when you played in the Neath Charity League, um, and basically told you to to believe in yourself, not to listen to any negative comments. And you could tell then that you were a, were a special talent, really, and you were going places. 
uh, and that he predicts that Louis will win something big by the time he's 30. So um, somebody's obviously seen something in you early on in your career and you can take that on to, on to the world stage. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, obviously. Um, hopefully, I win something before I'm 30. That'd be nice. <laughs> Maybe the 25 mark. But um, no, no, I'd still take it at 30. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But um, no, yeah, I've had some good advice off a lot of people. I knew enough all the same things as well. Um, but I do take it all in, no matter who it's from. Um, it's mostly the same. Don't listen to the negative comments. You are going to get them in darts, etc. Mm. So yeah, it is, it's nice to hear the comments like that, really. And the final question I got here um, is from... Con Hughes uh, on Instagram. Um, can Louis suggest good practice routines or the best routines for somebody who's getting into darts? Um, the, like, the main thing is, if, you, if you're throwing at the board, just make sure you're enjoying it. Um, start off just going into the segments. Like if you're in between the fives, the ones and the twenties, start off there and then try and work your way inside and then throw the twenties, nineteens, eighteens, then practice your doubles, go run the clock, run the clock singles, trebles, anything you want. Uh, but the main thing is you enjoy that. So if you enjoy practice, then you will improve 100%. How long do you practice a day then, do you think, like on an average day? Uh, most days I'll try and get at least four, four hours in, at least. Um, whether I've had a bad weekend, say on doubles, then I'll do most of the, most of the practice routine on doubles. Um, whether it's been scoring, I'll just throw a 20s non-stop. Um, so yeah, it, it varies really, but I'll try and get at least four hours in. Hmm. Are there, are there some days when you're like, oh, I'm just not feeling it today? Or are there times when you're not enjoying it and you just think, well, I'm just going to stop and I'll come back tomorrow when I'm, you know, feeling in the mood for it? Or have you had that yet? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think there's, there's definitely days where you, you just feel like nothing's, got, nothing's going right, nothing's going in, and so you're like, I'll oh, just leave it. Um, so if, if it does feel like that, the best thing to probably do is walk away and not get too frustrated. Then you'll feel things change in your game. Then you try and perfect things that don't need perfecting, really. So you're having a bad day. But, um, yeah, there's definitely days that can't be. You've got to pull through and put the work in anyway. So I just, I just try my best to enjoy it every day. That's great advice. It's quite nice as well that you've said, you know, focus on when you're starting out, focus on the segments, things like that. I've recently started out and I'm trying to focus on not hitting the door, to be honest, <laughs> because it looks like some worms have been at work on my door at the moment. There are just holes everywhere. But yes, that was very good advice. I think... <laughs> Dylan, you've got a nice message from some other dart player as well for Louis. Yeah, yeah. So um, Martin Thomas, you're obviously uh, familiar with Martin, Louis. Um, I was I was talking to him today, funnily enough, asking if he even got the call up for, for the Super Series 2. Um, and I said we were coming on and having a chat with you. And he just he just left a, a nice message, really, uh, just saying, great to see uh, Louis flying the flag for Wales. Uh, I got to know Louis quite well when he played with his son Keenan for, for Wales in the JDC World Cup. Yeah, yeah um, right. and just all the best, bro. Go at them, basically. So yeah, you know, there's there's obviously a lot of respect from from fellow players for you on the tour. Yeah, yeah, that means a lot as well. Ma Ma to be fair, Martin's a great guy, and he's, he's such an underrated player as well. I think because hmm. um, his name's not out there as much. So I know when he came on the, at the Super Series, he's done really well there. Um, he's in big scalps. He had a good game against Van der Voort on. Uh, <clears throat> on the streaming board I remember watching that back and he played played awesome but it's, it's not no surprise to me because I know what he can do and yeah. he's a great guy as well so obviously I appreciate him saying that and I think you know if there's maybe one maybe two more withdrawals from next week I think he, he does get the call up so you know yeah yeah I've seen him. the football out already I know Van yeah. Gerwen's pulled out as well now mm -hmm. so um, yeah yeah but I think that's, that's that's what the three of us would, would say you know same as what Dobie has said same as what Martin said it's it's great for us to see a, a fresh face, um, you know, flying the flag for us on the world stage. And, you know, just we're really, really looking forward to seeing where, where you take us, really, Louis. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Uh, absolutely. And even seeing, you know, how much you've progressed from, from the UK Open last year to mm. now, it's just incredible. And we're, we're hopefully going to enjoy the journey with you. So thank you very much for joining us. And hopefully we haven't put you off too much and you'll come back and speak to us soon. <laughs> yeah yeah most definitely it's been a, been a pleasure let's, let's come on again soon thank you very much guys. perfect thank you. thank you very much